Hi, it's Katrina. Cookie Cutter Shark. Also called the Cigar Shark, the Cookie Cutter Shark is a small, parasitic species that dwells in warm oceanic waters throughout the world, especially favoring habitats near islands. The species is called the Cookie Cutter Shark because it feeds by gouging round chunks out of larger animals with its sharp teeth like it just ate a cookie, except violently. It's dark brown, grows between 16 and a half and 22 inches long, and has a series of light-emitting organs called photophores along the underside of its body, which go a bright green color. This shark emits the strongest light of any known shark species, and is known to continue glowing for up to three hours after a specimen is removed from the water. Scientists believe, based on the arrangement of the photophores, that this deep dweller's bioluminescence attracts prey by mimicking the appearance of smaller fish a trait that would be exclusive to the cookie-cutter shark. Camiguin Cemetery Graveyards are spooky enough on their own on dry land, but the idea of encountering one underwater is even more unnerving. Off the coast of Cagayan de Oro in the Philippine island province of Camiguin, there is a submerged cemetery marking the resting place of residents who died or were buried alive when nearby Mount Vulcan erupted during the 1870s, causing part of the island to sink below sea level. Originally named Punta Pasil, or the Cape of Pazel, the site is now commonly recognized as the Sunken Cemetery. Marked by a single lonely cross rising out of the Bohol Sea, the underwater graves and other remnants of what was once the town of Katarmen were still visible during low tide until 1948, when Mount Vulcan erupted again putting them another 20 feet below the surface. Now, the burials are completely underwater at all times, with crosses that once stood on dry land scattering the sea floor. The site now serves as an artificial coral reef and is a popular diving attraction. Elusive Squid In recent years, scientists captured the first ever footage of big fin squid off the Australian coast. Known for being one of the most elusive marine species, big fin squid are rarely seen. In fact, there are only roughly a dozen confirmed sightings of the creature worldwide. These deep-dwelling cephalopods are known for their tiny bodies and extremely long arms and tentacles, which measure anywhere between 13 and 26 feet long. A newly published study in the journal Plus One describes how researchers sorted through hundreds of hours of footage filmed during two voyages in 2015 and 2017. The team deployed cameras at depths between 3,100 and 10,700 feet below the water's surface and unexpectedly captured video of what they believe are not one, but five different big fin squid specimens. The discovery is major for scientists who know very little about this enigmatic and strange-looking species. They seem almost otherworldly, scientist Deborah Osterhedge of Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization told The Guardian. Before now, experts had very little to go on when it came to studying big fin squid, relying solely on eyewitness accounts and dead or injured specimens that were captured in fishing nets as bycatch. The recorded sightings enabled researchers to take precise measurements of the animal for the first time and are giving them more material to study the creatures than ever before. Water Ghosts Spooky tales of paranormal encounters and an evil supernatural presence at Lake Lanier in northern Georgia have swirled for generations, with one popular legend claiming that the ghost of a woman in a blue dress lurks in the lake's waters, grabbing at swimmers and divers. The lake is rumored to be filled with all kinds of dangerous equipment and things that swimmers can get hooked on and drowned. Plus, the water is quite murky, so it is really hard to see. Trust me, I've been there. Even more alarmingly, over 200 people have drowned and died in tragic accidents since 1994 at the lake, which is a recreational hotspot for boating and water sports. Lake Lanier's dark history traces back to its very beginnings, when the Army Corps of Engineers decided they wanted to create a lake in the region to provide power and water. They offered to pay locals to relocate so they could get the job done, but many people refused to give up their land, which often went back generations in their family and had sentimental value. Over time, residents eventually begrudgingly accepted the offers, and from the get-go, the lake was shrouded in controversy. Many people regretted selling their land, but they had no choice but to watch helplessly as the waters rose above their former homes starting in 1956. During construction, workers relocated any marked graves they found, but it's likely that there were unmarked graves that became submerged. 
In addition to the string of tragedies at Lake Lanier in recent years, divers have reported numerous strange encounters, including freakishly massive catfish that supposedly rival a small car in size, and objects that feel like arms and legs, but can't be seen in the dark depths. Artifacts and structural remains from the communities that occupied the land before it was inundated also occasionally turn up, especially when the lake's water levels drop. All things considered, the hundreds of deaths, the alleged hauntings, and the terrifyingly huge fish, would you go swimming in Lake Lanier? I have, and I survived! Let me know in the comments below, but first be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! Lake Neuchâtel Shark Situated at the base of the Jura Mountains, Lake Neuchâtel is the largest lake that sits entirely in Switzerland. And while it is beautiful, it is also home to something quite creepy and surprising a giant shark with even longer, jagged teeth. While news of the eerily lifelike shark sculpture only seems to have recently gone viral, this shark was made in 2007 for the short movie Choc au Lac by the association La Jeunesse de la Côte. About 176 kids were involved in the making of the film, as well as some professionals. The shark was used as a prop to swallow up some young people before being dropped into the water for unsuspecting people to run into later. The group is quite proud of what they accomplished with such a small budget and are hoping to encourage other young people to get involved with the community and with cinema. The roughly 16-foot shark has now become somewhat of a diving attraction, according to tourism websites, which claim that there are other items to be discovered at the bottom of Lake Neuchâtel, including a terrifying dragon. Would you want to explore this lake? Let me know in the comments below. Sunken Crosses off the coast of La Palma in Spain's Canary Islands, there are 40 giant sunken stone crosses that sit 65 feet underwater. Known as Las Cruces de Malpique, or the Sunken Crosses of Malpique, they are not part of a cemetery that was consumed by the ocean. They were put there 20 years ago to memorialize the deaths of 40 Franciscan monks, including missionary Ignacio de Acevedo, who was killed in a vicious pirate attack in 1570. The religious travelers probably knew of the dangers associated with maritime travel in the region at the time, when the waters surrounding Spain were rife with piracy due to the country's newfound wealth. But they embarked on their mission anyway, and paid the ultimate price, when French pirates led by Jacques de Sauré boarded their ship and threw the men overboard, discarding them into the sea like rubbish. Perhaps the saddest aspect of the ordeal is that it occurred near the island. De Soray's decision not to get the 40 monks to dry land after commandeering their ship speaks volumes about how cruel and ruthless pirates could be. Pope Benedict XIV declared the men martyrs in 1742, and in 2000, the crosses were placed onto the seabed in their honor. Now a popular diving attraction, they stand as an eerie testament to the 40 lives of respectable religious men that were needlessly lost over four centuries ago. Normie A mysterious creature nicknamed Normie, widely known as North Carolina's Loch Ness Monster, is just one of several disturbing things to be found at Lake Norman, located roughly 20 miles outside the city of Charlotte. The man-made lake was created as a power source and recreational haven during the 1960s, displacing several communities in the process. Most of the buildings were left as they were, according to the LePage Johnson Realty Group, which states on its website only a few of the taller buildings were demolished because of the risk they may have posed to boats traveling on the lake, and a few standalone graves as well as entire cemeteries were relocated. Besides its underwater city, Lake Norman also contains a wrecked plane and of course is home to Normie, the fabled enormous monster who lurks in its depths. Some eyewitnesses have described Normie as having an alligator-like appearance, while others take a more common-sense approach, suggesting that the creature may be a sturgeon or a wildly overgrown catfish. Local news station WRAL noted that fishers have caught some unusually large catch at the lake, which offers advantageous hiding places from predators due to its unique topography. But even if Normie is a massive marine creature rather than a mythical monster, keep an eye out just in case. Cannibal Fish In early November, the Padre Island National Seashore Park Service posted an alarming image of a black and yellow strange-looking creature known as a sargassum fish. The creature is not terribly large, but it also doesn't look very nice, with its bright markings seeming more indicative of danger than being pleasing to the eye. As it turns out, the sargassum fish is quite ruthless. Described by the Padre Island National Seashore as a ravenous ambush predator, it lives among the seagrass in the Gulf of Mexico, where its coloring camouflages it perfectly. 
The fish is also capable of changing its color to better blend in with its surroundings. The sargassum fish does not actively chase its prey. Instead, the fish's dinner comes to it. It lurks well hidden while it waits for unsuspecting prey to pass by, using an appendage that protrudes from its head to lure its next meal. Once a fish identifies its target, it stealthily snatches the creature without warning. Sargassum fish are not picky eaters. In fact, they are even known to prey on their own kind. According to ocean exploration and preservation advocacy organization Mission Blue, one cannibalistic specimen was found with the remains of 16 young members of its species inside its stomach. These voracious hunters generally don't go after humans, but they can be harmful to us due to a toxin in their flesh called ciguatoxin, which can cause poisoning. An unlikely survivor. Three days after a tugboat sank off the Nigerian coast in 2013, a survivor was the last thing divers expected to encounter during a body retrieval effort. But much to their surprise, they found a 29-year-old man very much alive in a small pocket of dwindling air amid the wreck, which sat 100 feet below the water surface. The harrowing rescue was captured on video, and the footage is enough to strike paralyzing fear into anyone who watches it and imagines themselves in the same situation. This man was underwater, in the dark, in an air bubble, in a sunken ship for three days. The survivor, named Harrison Ojegba Okene, had spent 72 terrifying hours trapped in the air bubble that had saved his life. But Okene knew the precious air would run out. In a desperate race against the clock, amid depleting oxygen supply, and after noticing a diver's light in the water, he attempted to swim to the rescuer but failed to catch their attention. Lacking other options, Okene returned to the air pocket, where the carbon dioxide he exhaled and the frigid waters increasingly threatened his life. Finally, a diver came his way but was looking in the opposite direction. He eventually caught up with the diver and tapped the man on the shoulder. When the diver saw Okene's hand, he kind of freaked out since he initially thought he had bumped into a corpse. Thankfully, Okene was returned to safety, but not until after he spent another grueling 60 hours in a decompression chamber. The rest of the ship's crew had unfortunately perished, leading locals to accuse Okene of using black magic, as if the man wasn't already going through enough. Okene vowed to never return to sea and found work as a chef on dry land. In a later interview with the Associated Press, he explained that he was still haunted by the ordeal, plagued by nightmares and painful memories. A disturbing grave. If you ask anyone with even a slight case of claustrophobia, cave diving sounds terrifying enough on its own. But the idea of squeezing through small dark spaces and through long narrow tunnels with no easy escape doesn't stop the brave from becoming professional cave divers, and their work leads to some incredible and downright scary discoveries. In 2016, cave divers Vicente Fito and Ivan Hernandez found the ancient remains of a horribly disfigured woman while exploring the Chan Hole Cave near Tulum, along Mexico's Caribbean coastline. They were searching for another ancient skeleton, which was taken by thieves when they encountered another mysterious skeleton dubbed Chan Hole 3. While only around 30% of the bones were recovered, they are rather telling. An analysis revealed that the remains dated back 9,900 years. They belonged to a woman who was roughly 5 feet 4 inches tall, and who was around 30 years old when she died. Her skull bears three injuries, suggesting that the woman was perhaps bludgeoned, meeting a violent end. There are no signs of healing of these wounds, but it is still difficult to say whether she died from these wounds or survived the blows for some time, study leader Wolfgang Stinnesbeck told Life Science. It really looks as if this woman had a very hard time and an extremely unhappy end to her life. Additionally, the woman's skull contains crater-like deformities, indicating that she may have suffered from a bacterial infection such as Treponema peritonitis, which is related to syphilis. If this is the case, it represents the oldest known case of the disease in the Americas. The discovery is also helping to shed light on who America's early inhabitants were, with the study concluding that at least two different human groups lived in what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula at the end of the last ice age. The shape of the woman's skull, as well as her cavity-ridden teeth, indicate that her diet was high in sugar and that she therefore likely belonged to a group separate from the hunters and gatherers that lived in the area at the time. Scholars have long debated over who arrived in the Americas first and when. 
Discoveries like this and another skeleton found nearby, which is thought to be around 13,000 years old, are helping to answer these questions and rewrite early history. Whiskey on Ice In 2010, a lucky search team unearthed three crates of rare 19th century McKinley whiskey buried in Antarctic ice for 100 years. Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton ran out of supplies and abandoned his hut after a failed expedition to find the South Pole. Hidden underneath the floorboards were five crates, three containing whiskey and two labeled as brandy, and the good news is that they have been preserved on ice for all this time. They are so rare that they are not actually for sale, but might be worth about $200,000 per bottle. Shackleton used the hut during the 1907 British Antarctic Expedition. For 102 years afterwards, the crate sat, but the scotch was not frozen. Despite the near-constant freezing temperatures, it sat in for over a century. The expedition to find the scotch was launched jointly between White and McKay, the owner of the McKinley distillery that sold the scotch to Shackleton, and the New Zealand Antarctic Heritage Trust. The owner of White and McKay flew the precious cargo to Scotland in a chartered jet to try to replicate the long-lost recipe. They want people to taste a true part of history, and since most people won't ever be able to get their hands on the rarest bottles ever, they are ready to take on the challenge. Last I heard, they were actually able to do it, and made 50,000 limited edition bottles for about $160 each. In 2013, the whiskey was flown back to Antarctica and returned to its original resting place beneath Shackleton's shack as part of a program to preserve the legacy of the era of Antarctic exploration which lasted from 1898 to 1915. If you want a good whiskey, you know where to go. Definitely Scotland. Much easier than getting to Antarctica. Coin cash in Poland. While working in Krakow, Poland, a group of builders uncovered a cache of 10,200-year-old coins worth nearly half a million British pounds. Minted in the 18th century for the Polish crown, the rare copper coins were found in linen bags that rotted away while they remained hidden. The coins depict King Sigismund III Vasa, who reigned from 1587 to 1632. The old building, which was being renovated into an apartment and hotel, once belonged to a religious order at least 200 years ago. Known as the House of the Abbot, the coins were stashed in the basement, and copper coins from that time can be worth around 40 pounds each. The team who found them believe the monks of the church may have hidden the coins during a time of prosperity to save for a rainy day. After finding the coins, workers handed them over to the Krakow Archaeological Museum, who now have the task of not only preserving the coins, but also finding out why they never spent them. Fun fact, earlier this year nearly 1,000 silver coins were found under the floor of the Church of St. Andrew the Apostle in Poland's Varmia province. Coins are popping up everywhere! King's Hat Pin So it seems that if you want to find ancient treasures, England is the place to be. An amateur detectorist was in an unassuming field when she found a gold hat pin that could have belonged to King Edward IV. Found in the Lincolnshire field, the 15th century pin is believed to be worth as much as $18,000. Designed as a sun in splendor, which is considered the personal emblem of the king, the pin is similar to ones worn by Edward IV and his social circle. But how can its origin be verified? Another clue that it belonged to Edward IV is the purple amethyst stone at the pin center, another of his favorites. But if that is not enough proof for you, there is a portrait of the king in a French museum showing him wearing a pin strikingly similar to the one found in the English field. Whether it did belong to the king doesn't matter much though. The pin obviously belonged to someone in the upper echelons of society who had probably lost it in battle. Soldiers who could afford precious stones often wore them in battle with the belief that they would ward off death and defeat. Although it would make the discovery that much more fascinating, as Queen Elizabeth II is directly descended from Edward IV, the amethyst-studded hat pin is an impressive find no matter who originally owned it. Medieval Japanese Coins Japanese archaeologists recently hit a literal jackpot when they unearthed a huge jar filled with over 100,000 bronze coins. Dating back to the first half of the 15th century, the jar is filled with coins that experts believe belong to a medieval samurai. The ceramic jar was found north of Tokyo, and as one of the largest discoveries of medieval coins in the country, it was understandably a huge success for the team. Next to the stone lid, they also found a wood tablet with the words 260 written on it. 
leading researchers to believe it could refer to the coins, which could total 260,000. Found buried six and a half feet below ground, it is believed to have been placed there to save the samurai's riches during a time of upheaval in Japan. As different families and feudal lords jockeyed for power in the 15th century, ninjas were hired as secret assassins. So powerful samurais did their best to hide their riches from everybody. The coins have an aged patina on them, giving them a distinctive blue look, and the holes in the center were used to string them together on ropes before they were added to the jar. Of the coins examined first, there were 19 different coins from China and different areas of Japan. With the civil war raging and military dictators leading the country, the emperor was weakened, and it seems he did whatever he could to safeguard what little power he had left. Coins found under theater. Speaking of pots of gold, Italian historians discovered a stone urn in one of the most unlikely places, under the Cressoni Theater in Como. In 2018, while working on the abandoned theater, the broken soapstone amphora was discovered. But even though the unusual shape and design of the urn was impressive, what it held was even more stunning, an estimated 300 gold coins from the 5th century. The cache was found in remarkable condition, with all of the images and engravings on the coins intact. Considering they were hidden there so long ago, the fact that they had not tarnished is incredible. Because the coins were so tightly packed in small stacks, restoration would take some time, as they had to be carefully removed coin by coin. But during initial study, 27 of the coins were separated from the rest, giving researchers a glimpse at the rare coins. There was very little currency circulating during the 5th century, so this find, with engravings that suggest they were minted during the reigns of five different emperors, is priceless. None of the coins date later than 474 AD, which means they could be valued at millions of euros. But how did they end up under the theater in the first place? An expert in rare coins believes the location may have been used by someone who wanted a way to get access to the money quickly and without the prying eyes of others. Apparently, they found a good spot. The way they were stacked, similar to how a banker places coins, also suggests the money could have come from a bank or deposit as opposed to a private owner. Located not far from the ancient city of Novum Comum, the coins were found in the theater's basement, which was first inaugurated in 1807 before closing in the late 90s. As it was slated for destruction to make way for luxury residences, work had to be suspended while experts performed further excavations to make sure there were no other treasures hidden underground. Shakespeare's Ring In 2019, a retired male lady named Sue Kilvert made a discovery with her metal detector that could have once belonged to one of the world's most renowned playwrights. In a field next to Shakespeare Hall in England, a property once owned by William Shakespeare, the grandmother found a delicate gold posy ring about eight inches underground. A small ring with red and white enamel, it is inscribed with the words, Truth betrays not. Upon first glance, she was not very impressed with her find, but upon further inspection and its location on what was once Shakespeare's property, she started to think twice. Fellow treasure hunters told her that it was a posy ring, which during the 15th to 17th centuries were popular as lovers' gifts. Some believe William Shakespeare may have written his infamous play, As You Like It, at the location in 1599, so the potential that the ring once belonged to the famous writer is there. Unfortunately for Kilvert, the ring had to be turned over to the local expert, who must be informed when any potential treasures are found. After an inquest into whether the find constitutes a treasure, Kilvert must offer it to a museum for a price that the British Museum sets. She would still receive a reward for finding it. Even if it is not a true treasure by museum standards, the thought that it could have once belonged to William Shakespeare is enough to inspire other treasure hunters to take up their metal detectors to uncover their own potential treasures. Bronze Age Sword If you thought all explorers have to have spent years studying their profession, the story of an eight-year-old girl from the UK will change your mind. After being handed a metal detector, Ava Bray headed out and promptly found an ancient artifact. While spending time with her grandfather, who is a member of the National Council of Metal Detecting, Ava unearthed a Bronze Age axe on a beach in Southbourne. After about only a minute or so, Ava heard a beeping sound coming from her metal detector, and when she started digging, she found the object, about eight inches below the surface. After shouting for her grandfather to come see what she found, they determined it was a bronze axe. Not knowing at first how old it was, they took the object home and did a little sleuthing. 
Although it might not necessarily be particularly valuable, it is a rare artifact that was in good condition, and if anything, it inspired little Ava to take up an interest in Bronze Age history. After sending photos to a local antiquities expert, the object's authenticity was confirmed, with its origin believed to relate to a similar horde of axes discovered in 2011. This just goes to show you that it's never too early to start hunting treasures. Pompeii Relics It's not uncommon to pick up a souvenir when you travel abroad, but one tourist who visited the ancient city of Pompeii got more than she bargained for. Fifteen years after visiting the Italian city, the Canadian woman returned a package with two mosaic tiles, parts of an amphora or urn, and a piece of ceramic to a travel agent in Pompeii, saying that she had suffered years of bad luck after stealing the objects from the site. As you probably know, Pompeii was the site of a historic calamity when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, smothering everyone and everything in its path. One of Italy's most visited attractions, Pompeii, remained buried under ash until the 16th century. But the tourist wasn't able to resist taking a little something extra home with her after her trip. Whether her bad luck really can be tied to the object she took might not matter, unless they happen to have once belonged to a Roman sorceress, like other ritual artifacts that were discovered at Pompeii in 2019. When archaeologists were excavating at the ancient site last year, they uncovered a wooden box containing crystals including amber and amethyst, as well as glass beads, figurines, and a miniature human skull carved from bone. Researchers stumbled upon the box when they were excavating Casa di Giardino in the archaeological park. They were found in a home with 10 victims, including women and children. Because none of the objects were made from gold, like most objects of value belonging to Pompeii's elite, experts believe they were once the possessions of a servant or a slave. The objects and amulets symbolize fortune, fertility, and protection against bad luck, further proof that they were used in some sort of sorcery. As researchers study the objects to understand their meaning and use, they offer a glimpse into the varied lives of those who not only lived in Mount Vesuvius's shadow, but who died in such a horrific way. Rare Gold Coins When four men set out to an English field to do a little treasure hunting in 2019, they didn't know what to expect. Turns out, they found coins from the 14th century. The more than 550 rare silver coins were unearthed from a field in Hamilton. It took them four days to excavate the hoard, which included 12 rare gold nobles from the time of the plague. Believed to be worth at least 150,000 pounds, the coins depict both Edward I and Edward II. At the time of their discovery, the men were taking part in an organized rally, with most of the other participants digging up shotgun shells and old bits of iron. Three of the men were friends and had not had much luck, so they were about to move off to another spot when their metal detector indicated they had possibly found a hammered silver coin. According to the rules of detecting and treasure finding, anything over three coins is considered a hoard, and organizers must be informed. After the men declared their find, the area was cleared so they could continue working, but that didn't stop curious onlookers from gathering to watch them work. As they did, the men continued finding coin after coin, totaling 545 silver coins and the 12 gold nobles over the course of three days. The coins, believed to be from the reigns of Edward I and II, from 1272 to 1327, are a rare mintage mix of Lincoln, Birmingham, Ireland, and Scotland. The biggest gold hoard found since 2011, and the biggest silver hoard found since 2007, the find is one that was a coup for these amateur treasure hunters. While they were being valued, they stayed in a local museum, with the proceeds after valuation later split between the finders and the landowners. Fen Treasure The legendary Forrest Fen treasure was confirmed found in June of this year. Forrest Fen himself revealed it in a post on his website after people have been searching for it for years. An eccentric and wealthy former art dealer named Forrest Fen hid the cache of gold and jewels in the U.S. Rocky Mountains. In 2010, he published a cryptic 24-line poem containing clues about the hoard's whereabouts, prompting treasure seekers from all around to travel in search of it. At least four treasure seekers lost their lives searching for it, and countless others suffered accidents in the woods. Fenn announced the discovery in his blog, but did not disclose the lucky finder's identity because the finder wanted to remain anonymous. The treasure chest was found by a man I did not know and had not communicated with since 2018, Fenn wrote, also pointing out that the man found the chest exactly where he had left it a decade earlier. 
He posted photographs of himself going through the bronze chest, which he said was darker than it was 10 years ago. Inside, there was a weathered silver bracelet, numerous gold coins, a rusty key, and gold nuggets, among other valuables. While rescue personnel are probably glad the Fen treasure was found, given the tendency for treasure hunters to put their safety at risk, fortune hunters wanted to know where it was found and weren't too happy about it. In Fen's words, the finder wants me to remain silent, and I always said the finder gets to make those two calls, who and where. Disappointed enthusiasts continued to speculate about where the treasure was found, with many believing that they knew the location, but that the finder beat them to it. Fen says congratulations to everyone who participated in the search, and that he hopes people will still be motivated to go out and explore nature. Gigantic Diamond Canadian mining company Lucara Diamond Corps recently discovered one of the largest diamonds ever found. The 998-carat gem, excavated at the Karawi Mine in Botswana, ranks among history's top five biggest stones of its type. It won't remain this way for long, however, because Lucara plans to split it up into smaller diamonds and is currently consulting with HB Antwerp, its cutting and polishing partner. The company has made headlines several times in recent years for finding gems of record-holding size. In 2015, the fourth largest diamond ever found was mined at Karawi. Known as the Lesseti La Rona, the 1,109-carat stone sold for $53 million. The Constellation, an 813-carat gem, snagged a whopping $63 million. As impressive as these recent discoveries are, they hardly rival the largest diamond ever found. That title goes to the 3,106-carat Cullinan Diamond, discovered in 1905 near Pretoria, South Africa. The famous diamond was divided, and two of the largest gems can now be found set in the British crown jewels. Biggest Bony-Toothed Bird When paleontologists and archaeologists go to a dig, they often excavate as much as possible since they usually have a very limited amount of time, and in many cases they want to save things before they get exposed to the elements or stolen. So what happens is that many artifacts get put into storage and forgotten about for years. This is exactly what happened with a handful of fossils that sat for decades at the University of California, Berkeley. Then, grad student Peter Close took notice. University of California Riverside paleontologists discovered the fossils during the 1980s on Seymour Island in the Antarctic Peninsula. Then they were put in a box, and Close decided to take a look for himself, and found that they belonged to two prehistoric birds. Imagine a ginormous seagull with a 21-foot wingspan and serrated teeth. In a recently published study, he identified the foot bone and partial jawbone as coming from a group of predators called pelagornithids, or bony-toothed birds. Bony-toothed birds traveled all over the globe, sometimes flying for weeks at a time as they passed over the ocean. Their presence in Antarctica over a 10 million year duration indicates the birds' prolonged survival, and also serves as evidence of the now barren continent once being flush with diverse wildlife. These creatures existed for 60 million years or more. Characterized by their long beaks and sharp teeth, they hunted by snatching their prey out of the water. Bony-toothed birds were massive, with a wingspan of up to 21 feet, and the fossils Close and other researchers analyzed indicate that the creatures found at Seymour Island represented the largest of them all. Based on the bone sizes, the team calculated the specific sizes of the two birds they represent, concluding that the foot bone, which dates back roughly 50 million years, belonged to the largest specimen known for the entire extinct group of pelagornithids. The jawbone, which is estimated to be around 40 million years old, also represents a huge specimen who was likely as big, if not bigger, than the largest known skeletons of the bony tooth group. Massive Coral Reef In an era where the world's precious coral reefs are bleaching and increasingly dying out, the discovery of any previously unknown coral reef is a welcomed one which is why Australian scientists were extra pleasantly surprised when they located a massive coral reef over 1,640 feet high, taller than the Empire State Building. Situated within the Great Barrier Reef, it's the first discovery of its type in over 120 years, according to the Schmidt Ocean Institute. Researchers detected the coral reef on October 20th of this year, while on a 12-month expedition aboard the Institute's Falkor research vessel. It's one of several known detached reefs in the region, and was found using an underwater robot named Subastian. Get it? 
The state of our knowledge about what's in the ocean has long been so limited, said Schmidt Ocean Institute co-founder Wendy Schmidt. Thanks to new technologies that work as our eyes, ears, and hands in the deep ocean, we have the capacity to explore like never before. This marks just one of several groundbreaking discoveries the Schmidt Ocean Institute has made this year. In addition to this and other coral reefs, scientists identified up to 30 new species and discovered the longest recorded sea creature, a cynophore measuring 148 feet. Great White Shark A gargantuan great white shark named Unama Key was recently spotted swimming south of Miami off Key Largo. In the early morning hours of November 5th, she swam to the water's surface and her tagged dorsal fin pinged her location to researchers from OSEARCH, a non-profit organization that tags and tracks sharks. Tipping the scales at 2,076 pounds and measuring around 15 feet long, Unamaki is the second largest great white shark OSEARCH has ever tagged in the North Atlantic. She's traveled quite a distance over the last two months after pinging in Nova Scotia, Canada, where she was originally tagged in September. Over the last 103 days, the massive shark had swum 13,374 miles, according to the OSEARCH website. Unama Key looked like she was pregnant, and researchers believe she may be traveling to calmer waters to give birth. They hope she leads them to a previously unknown white shark nursery. Earlier this year, OSEARCH researchers tagged an even larger female great white shark off the Nova Scotia coast. Dubbed the Queen of the Ocean, she weighed in at 3,541 pounds and is 17 feet long. As the world's largest predatory fish, great whites can weigh as much as 5,000 pounds and grow to over 20 feet long. They are found worldwide, although spotting one as large as Unama Key or the Queen of the Ocean is extremely rare. Sukhoi Log Russian gold mining giant PJSC Polyus recently made headlines for its claims that it owns the world's largest gold deposit. The alleged literal treasure trove of ore, known as the Sukhoi Log Gold Deposit, is located in Siberia's frigid and isolated Irkutsk region. Polyus purchased the field three years ago. It accounts for over a quarter of Russia's gold reserves. An audit conducted in October revealed that the mine contains 40 million ounces of proven reserves, amounting to a gold content of 2.3 grams per ton. Soviet geologists discovered Sukhoi Log in 1961, and the Russian government finally auctioned it off in 2017. Polyus purchased the reserves in partnership with a state-owned entity, which the company subsequently bought out. It will focus on scaling down its debts before developing the field, and has yet to announce when it plans to begin production. While the project will be a huge and costly undertaking for Polyus, with an estimated price tag of $2.5 billion, the company also stands to profit immensely. In a recent interview, CEO Pavel Grachev expressed his enthusiasm for the project, also noting that Polyus will carry out the project with the best environmental standards in mind. The Great Fox Spider The Great Fox Spider is a nocturnal species long thought to be extinct in the UK, but it was recently spotted after not being seen for 21 years. It's one of Britain's largest spiders, as well as one of the biggest members of the wolf spider family, and is classified as critically endangered following its rediscovery. Until recently, the last reported sighting of a great fox spider happened in 1999 in Dorset's Morden Bog National Nature Reserve. The species has only been recorded in three areas of Britain, all in the warmer, more southerly part of the island in Dorset and Surrey. Arachnid enthusiast Mike Waite from the Surrey Wildlife Trust rediscovered the great fox spider after searching at night for two years at an undisclosed location on a Ministry of Defense training ground. That is dedication and love right there. Great fox spiders display sexual dimorphism, with females growing larger than males. The biggest female specimens are thought to reach a leg span of 2 inches. The species does not catch prey using webs. Instead, great fox spiders pursue targets such as beetles, smaller spiders, and ants, and seizes them by pouncing on them and injecting deadly venom. The toxins immobilize prey and liquefy their organs, which the spiders consume using their fanged jaws. The species' reappearance comes as good news to scientists, as it was not even discovered until around 120 years ago, and has only been witnessed a handful of times since. Aguada Phoenix. Earlier this year, researchers identified what they believe to be the oldest and largest ancient Maya monument ever found. 
it was discovered in the southern Mexican state of Tabasco at the Aguada Phoenix archaeological site, which measures nearly 4,600 feet at its longest. Built between 1000 and 800 BC, the site dwarfs others that date back to the same period. To our knowledge, this is the oldest monumental construction ever found in the Maya area and the largest in the entire pre-Hispanic history of the region, the researchers wrote in a paper published in the online journal Nature. The land directly above the complex is developed, and people have lived on it for quite some time, seemingly oblivious to the ancient ruins hidden in plain sight beneath their feet. In the words of archaeologist Takeshi Inomata, who led the study, the site went undetected for so long because it is so flat and huge. It just looks like a natural landscape. The team detected the complex using LiDAR technology, which enabled them to detect anomalies in the terrain that are undetectable to the naked eye. What they found was an artificial plateau sitting 50 feet above the surrounding area. Only one stone structure has been found at Aguada Phoenix, and it depicts an animal. While the site bears some similarities to architectural features of the Olmec culture, its lack of sculptures of elite individuals and the absence of other indicators of social inequality distinguish the former Maya residence culture from that of the Olmec. Observations like this stand to teach researchers new lessons about how the people at Aguada Phoenix and other ancient settlements organized their society, perhaps adhering to a communal structure that rejected hierarchy. Largest Cave Fish There are about 250 or so known subterranean fish. According to National Geographic, they tend to be small, a few inches at most, due to having limited access to food. But a recently discovered species, found in a cave in northeastern India, turned out to be several times larger than other underground fish, making it the largest known subterranean fish ever found. At nearly a foot and a half long, it's believed to weigh around two pounds, ten times more than any other cave fish. Like other underground species who live in the complete absence of light, it lacks eyes and may be able to sense some light at best, but is otherwise blind. Researchers are unsure how the creature maintains its body size or what it even eats, as well as how the species has adapted to its extensive and deep cave habitat. For these and other reasons, scientists believe the fish may be in the evolution process, according to study co-author biologist Daniel Harries, who discovered the unusually large animal. Harry speculated that the species feeds on vegetation, although this behavior was not observed during the expedition last year. Experts are fascinated by the discovery, which seems to yield more questions than answers. Researchers are currently working to learn more and are examining the fish's DNA to verify that it's a new species and determine if and how it's related to any surface-dwelling fish. Ancient Ivory Workshop Archaeologists in Pakistan have discovered the remains of the world's largest ivory workshop in the 2,100-year-old port city of Banbor. Dating back 2,100 years, they found nearly 90 pounds of discarded ivory fragments at the site, which is thought to date back around 800 years, a time when gold and ivory were similar in value. There were 6,675 ivory pieces total, remnants of carved pieces from the time. The newly found ivory comes as part of a project funded by the Sindh government's Department of Culture and Antiquities in partnership with the Italian Foreign Ministry. Nowhere else in the world have ivories been found in such a large quantity, said archaeologist Simone Mantellini. Based on an analysis, the team believes that the ivory pieces represent discarded fragments from a workshop that produced fine carvings and that the material was likely sourced from Indian elephants. Production was too expensive for the goods to be limited to the local market, indicating that products were manufactured for trade with China, Iran, Iraq, and other countries. This notion is bolstered by the presence of a wide variety of pottery at the site that appears to have been imported from numerous places outside the region, showing just how surprisingly interconnected the ancient world was. Chronosaurus the extinct Kronosaurus genus of marine reptiles constituted some of the largest pliosaurs that ever lived. They are named after Kronos, the leader of the Greek titans who ate his own children to preserve his power. The animal Kronosaurus was one of history's largest and deadliest aquatic creatures. The first fossil evidence of the creature was discovered in northeastern Australia in 1899 and belongs to the K. Queenslandicus species, which was not formally described until 1924. The next Kronosaurus fossil turned up 75 years later in Colombia. Discovered by a farmer, 
the specimen is more complete than the one discovered before it and represents the only other known Kronosaurus species, K. boyacensis. Scientists believe there may be more species yet to be discovered, and based on the distance between the only two places where fossils have been found, they believe that the animal had worldwide distribution. Like other pliosaurs, Kronosaurus had a large head, short neck, and broad flippers. Its teeth were large, measuring several inches, but were also blunt, which the creature compensated for with its strong bite. Kronosaurus killed its prey by chomping down on the creature and crushing and shaking it to death. With an estimated body length of around 33 feet, it ranked on the larger end of the pliosaur spectrum. In fact, there was only one larger pliosaur, known as the Liopleurodon, but there could have been larger pliosaurs, whose fossils simply have not been discovered. Pictish Anvil The Pictish people were a lost people that we know very little about. They were called the Picti, or Painted People, by the Romans, and they were a confederation of tribes located in northern Scotland. In 2016, archaeologists found an unusual artifact on the island of Rousey, an anvil that is believed to be 1,500 years old. How does an anvil help us learn anything? And how do we know it was Pictish? This ancient anvil still has sooty handprints and knee marks, and the location of where it was found helped prove that it was from the Pictish tribe. Archaeologists are amazed at the handprint because it is so personal, and you can imagine the person who must have left it behind all those years ago. The anvil's find led to the discovery of a coppersmith's entire workshop. The site, called the Now of Swandro, also has a 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb, Iron Age roundhouses, Pictish buildings, and a Viking settlement. Archaeologists are now racing to uncover everything they can because this place is being gradually swept out to sea, and everything they leave behind will be lost forever. Cone-shaped skulls of Mexico and South America When skeletons with strangely shaped skulls were discovered in Mexico in 2012, archaeologists were understandably taken aback. Not far from the town of Onavas, the site contained 25 human burials, with 13 of them found with these cone-head-shaped skulls. Dating back to about 1,000 years ago, the skulls were found by accident during a dig for an irrigation system in the Sonora state. Dating to between 945 AD and 1308 AD, these misshapen skulls are not very common, especially as far north as Mexico. Archaeologists still aren't sure why these people specifically deformed their heads. Other interesting artifacts found at the site included nose rings and jewelry, as well as pendants that presumably belonged to these ancient people. But why did the skeletons have these strange cone-shaped heads? It does seem to be done on purpose, as part of an ancient ritual where an infant's head would be bound between two blocks of wood to apply pressure to the skull and give it that shape. Known as cranial deformation, it is a practice found all over the world, but different cultures did it for different reasons. Archaeologist Cristina Garcia Moreno said that many of the bones were the remains of children, so perhaps the practice of deforming skulls may have been inept and dangerous. The body of Pakal, who was a famous ruler of Mexico, was discovered in a temple in Palenque near Chiapas, and he also had an elongated skull. Since Pakal was a leader, could that mean these skeletons were also aristocrats? As the powerful elite continued this practice, it may have bound them together, but also alienated them from other groups by highlighting social inequality. Many other skulls like this have also been found previously in Peru, when in 1927, 429 mummies were found in a large subterranean structure. Ancient people in Peru gave themselves these elongated skulls as a mark of status, and it was most likely the case in other places as well. When studies were conducted on over 200 individuals from a 300-year period, researchers found that the women with purposefully altered skulls had a broader diet and had fewer injuries than those who had unaltered skulls, giving evidence to the theory that those with elongated skulls were of a higher class. Having this enormous elongated skull would have been an easy distinguishing feature of the ruling elite, so they would be easy to spot in a crowd. 200 years before the Inca, a small ethnic community known as the Coyagua also practiced intentional head shaping like this. The Spanish noted that the Coyagua people had tall, long skulls, while another community known as the Cavanas had wider, flatter skulls. As soon as the Spanish took over in the 16th century, this practice was banned for everyone. Skull Helmets Speaking of skulls, 
Finding the remains of ancient children is a solemn occasion, but when archaeologists found two infants buried wearing strange helmets on their heads, they were stumped. Not just for the fact that they were outfitted this way, but because the helmets were made from the skulls of other children. Discovered in a burial site called Salang on the coast of Ecuador, the two infants were found along with nine other burials. Scientists say that this is the only known case where children's skulls were buried this way, and they do not know what caused the deaths of the infants or the children. When archaeologists found them, the skull helmets were placed tightly over their heads. Scientists also believe that when the skull helmets were placed on top, they most likely still had flesh on them, otherwise they would not have survived this long. Chillingly, one of the infant's faces looked through the cranial vault in its mask, the space in the skull where the brain is housed. But that wasn't the only strange thing discovered at this site. A hand phalanx, a type of bone, was found wedged between one of the infant's heads and the helmet. Researchers had a lot of work ahead of them to determine the origins of this strange ritual. Why were younger babies wearing children's skulls? Were they related? And why were some wearing these helmets while others were not? But previous work in the area pointed to a volcanic eruption not long before the infants were buried here. So could the local people have performed this complicated, ritualistic burial as a way to appease the gods? There were special figurines made of stone found nearby, so it is possible that they were also buried with these talismans as a way to protect them in the afterlife. Either way, this chilling find is one that researchers won't forget anytime soon. Ancient Egyptian Workshop and Mummies In October 2019, two new mummies were unearthed in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. Although no one knows who they were, along with finding them, archaeologists made perhaps an even bigger find. Several workshops nearby, with equipment and tools, give us a glimpse into the daily life of those who worked in the burial and mummification process for the elite. One of the more prized discoveries was that of a complex of workshops, where colorful pottery, furniture, and gold were made and processed, and then placed inside the tombs. A box used to store items housed the remnants of onions, linen, figs, rope, and other bits of material left over from the mummification process. Other structures, including ones to bake bread, make pottery, and store water were found, along with two rings that were inscribed with the name Amenhotep III, grandfather to King Tut. This proved to be a fruitful site to explore, with 40 huts used for tool storage that dated back 3,300 years. Archaeologists are working hard to sort through everything and translate inscriptions written on pottery in workshops located near some of the most famous tombs. And everyone is crossing their fingers in the hopes of finding more royal tombs. The excavation of this area is going to take a very, very long time. Gigantia Malta on the Mediterranean island of Gozo, one of the islands of Malta, stands a megalithic temple complex that predates the pyramids of Egypt. The two towers were built during the Neolithic Age, between 3600 and 2500 BC. They are the second oldest man-made religious structures in the world. The temples appear to have been built to honor fertility deities. There have been many figurines and other artifacts found on the site that are associated with fertility cults. According to local folklore, they were built by a giantess, but the true builders are unknown. The Gigantia complex includes two complete temples and a third that was never finished. They face the equinox sunrise and are enclosed inside a boundary wall, setting them apart from the daily lives of the people who worshipped there. The temples were built in a cloverleaf shape, with semicircular apses connected with a long central passage. The walls were covered with plaster, some of which can still be seen. The largest temple is the one furthest to the south, and it's also the most complete. It stands six meters tall and includes multiple altars and huge stone blocks with a carved recess, which might have been used as a place of ritual ablution or purifying baths. Based upon the sheer volume of animal bone that has been found on the site, it's conjectured that the temple was used as a site of animal sacrifice. These temples were built at a time when the wheel had not yet been introduced to Malta and when there were no metal tools available to the islanders. Researchers have found many small spherical stones, which they think were used like ball bearings to help transport the huge stones, but much about this place still remains a mystery. Ancient Palace At the ancient site of Abydos in Egypt, a recent discovery has archaeologists pretty excited. 
In 2019, they found an ancient Egyptian palace that adjoins the Temple of Ramses II. When researchers were previously excavating around the temple, they found evidence of the structure, which included a stone walkway that led them to another entrance. What excited them even more was the discovery of a cartouche of Ramses II, a hieroglyphic marking that denotes royalty. After excavating the structure's cornerstones, more royal symbols were found, giving them a better understanding of the temples built during this period. These discoveries will now change the original floor plan of the temple for the first time in 160 years. It seems that building a palace next to a temple might have been some sort of tradition since the Luxor funerary temple to King Ramses III also has a royal palace beside it. Located about 300 miles south of Cairo, Abydos is located in the low desert west of the Nile and is home to a royal necropolis where other pharaohs are also entombed. There also used to be temples to various Egyptian gods, including Osiris and Pharaoh Seti I. As the main center of worship for Osiris during Egypt's Middle Kingdom, it is not uncommon for small chapels and cemeteries to be uncovered there. Like his father Seti, Ramses II obviously saw Abydos as the origin of royal power, so ordering a new temple to be built there for himself shows that he too saw it as a place not only for burials and temples, but also as a place for him to live his daily life. Lost Israeli City In 2019, archaeologists uncovered a lost city north of Tel Aviv that they consider to be the Big Apple of the Early Bronze Age. The 5,000-year-old city is believed to have been home to some 6,000 people. As workers were preparing the area to build a new road, they uncovered walls and road systems that kept going and going. At the time, the city would have been the New York of its day, and it is definitely one of the largest cities to have ever been uncovered in Israel. Surrounded by a fortification wall, it has an intricate road system, with residential and public areas, alleys and streets that all point to it being at one time a highly organized society with a social hierarchy. Millions of pottery fragments, flint tools and vases were among some of the objects uncovered, as well as a large temple filled with figurines and burned animal bones. A courtyard was also uncovered, with a large stone basin that researchers believe could have been used for religious rituals. Evidence of two springs indicate the people living there may have made money from agriculture, trading with people from different regions and cultures. Even more fascinating is the fact that during excavations, archaeologists also found evidence of an older city built beneath this one, dating back 7,000 years. To preserve the ruins, officials plan to continue building their road, but high above the ancient city to protect it. New Human Species In a cave in the Philippines, workers found a previously unknown species believed to be a type of hominin, and perhaps could be a distant relative of ours. Standing no more than four feet high, the hominin did have similar features to those of modern humans, combined with anatomical features from much earlier hominins. Found in the Callao Cave on Luzon Island, the remains of the early human were unlike anything else ever found in the world. Unearthed by a team from Australia, the fossils included an adult finger, toe bone, and five upper teeth, as well as the femur of a juvenile. Estimated to be about 50,000 years old, these early humans would have been around during the Pleistocene period, which began around 2.6 million years ago, when there were several human-like species walking around. The remains of this individual had molars that are similar to those of modern humans, but the shape of their other teeth and the anatomy of their feet show that they are a unique species. Standing just under four feet, the individual also had signs of long, curved fingers and toes, indicating they might have been able to scale trees just as easily as walking upright. The discovery of these remains adds another piece of the puzzle to human evolution, showing that the early humans that lived in the region evolved differently to how humans evolved on mainland Asia. It also raises more questions about how humans spread across the globe as they evolved. The original belief was that both Homo erectus and Homo sapiens left Africa, with Homo erectus settling in Asia until modern humans arrived. But this new species, now known as Homo luzonensis, may very well upturn this theory. This presents researchers with a daunting and fascinating task of determining if the humans on Luzon are a new group of hominins, which would make them another early relative to all of us. Mummified Egyptian Priests In another recent discovery from Egypt, 30 perfectly preserved mummies were uncovered in an ancient necropolis near Luxor. The mummies appear to be those of ancient priests, with their coffins dating back about 3,000 years. 
The striking coffins were each vibrantly painted with hieroglyphs and intricate patterns and arranged in two layers. Inside, they housed 23 males and five adult females, with two children also buried alongside them. As archaeologists revealed the news of their discovery, they opened two of the coffins, showing that the mummies inside were not only well-preserved, but their outer wrappings were still intact. Their faces remained covered, so it was too early to see if any artifacts were buried with them. As excavations continued, researchers set out to decipher the hieroglyphs and analyze the details on the coffins to try and determine who the mummies belonged to and why they were buried together in a cachette or a group instead of individually. After the discovery, the coffins were moved to the Grand Egyptian Museum in Cairo for cleaning and examination. Ancient Dinosaur Eggs It's not every day that someone finds 66 million year old dinosaur eggs, but for a 10 year old boy in China, it was his lucky day. While out playing near the Dong River in the city of Heiyuan, the boy was looking for a rock to crack walnuts with when he made the discovery. He was digging around in the sand looking for the perfect stone when he found what he described as a strange rock, noticing circle patterns on it when he dug it up. After his mother contacted authorities, experts came to the site to secure the object, almost immediately confirming it was an egg. As they excavated around the area, they found 10 more eggs in a nest each measuring about three and a half inches across. The eggs are believed to have come from the late Cretaceous period, making them about 65 million years old and from an era just before dinosaurs went extinct. Although an incredibly exciting find, this is not the first time dinosaur eggs were found in the area. In 2015, workmen uncovered over 40 eggs in one spot, and more than 17,000 eggs have been found overall. It's easy to see how Heijuan is known as the home of the dinosaurs. Thanks for watching. Which discovery was your favorite? Which one would you have liked to make yourself? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye!